welcome back to another episode of the Dr. Supercoach podcast. And believe it or not, we are joining you in November. The game for 2023 is yet to launch. We are still about a month away from that, maybe less with the eyes emote. Um, I'm joined by <laughs> Chizo. And Chizo, what the hell are we doing here? I don't know. You just you sent me this message and said jump on Skype and then suddenly I'm, I'm, I'm here and you're asking me questions. I'm like, I, I finished eighth last year. What, what do you want to interview me for? It's true. I was very vague with my messaging. Um, so we're, we're not here to talk about the trade period, which is done. We're not here to talk about the national draft, which is also done. No. Um, today we're actually here to discuss us, I guess, in a way, mm. um, Dr. Supercoach. So we haven't ever done this before and um, I guess for unknown reasons as it's, I think it's handier to explain this and get our thoughts out on a microphone rather than just typing it and, and just sending a text at everyone and that's how they consume this new information that we're either very excited about or... You, you don't end relationships with a, with a text. It's true. Yeah, we're going. We're out. See you later. Um, <laughs> no, no, we're, we're still staying. So we've got just a lot of exciting things to talk about Um a lot of exciting things to talk about. I mean, we just want to make sure the message is coming across as we intend it um, and all at once as well so everyone can just consume all the information um, and, and sort of act from there. So a lot of this is going to be related to our Patreon, um, some of it to our Facebook page um, and some of it to our Twitter, some of it to just a little bit of everything about us and some of it just in the general brand. So... Um, Firstly, Chizo, do we want to just dive straight in, or are we going to do pleasantries and ask how each other are, or how? how no, are no, no, no. Let's, let's dive straight in. This is a serious uh, I, podcast, no, no, and we've got some okay. serious topics to cover. And uh, as well, you, you know, you've well know by now, I don't one. care about you. You've got topic number one, Chizo. So uh, if you want yep. to take it away, um, yeah. Well, basically, the gist of this podcast is that we just want to update everyone that spends time listening to us yarn every week about what the future holds for Dr. Supercoach and us in particular. Um, and there's lots of cogs turning in in the background. Um, the first thing to mention is that we're in the process of switching our podcast uh, service, uh, like hosting service from one um, to another. So um, there may be a period of time. Like I, I know everyone's in, in November wanting to listen to the Round 12 recap. I know I am, JB. I assume you are as well. Um, so there may be a, a couple of weeks where... Is <laughs> that what that noise is? Um, we'll just be updating. So um, if there's – you can't access something like that in the next couple of weeks, that's that's what's happening in the background, um, using the downtime for that. Um, but specifically, we've got some news in terms of our uh, Patreon. And uh, the first thing that we should mention is that Patreon has finally given us the opportunity to um, work in Australian dollars, JB, for so long the last – We've been up for four years now on Patreon having to deal with um, USD and not only is it a pain for us at you know at the end of the financial year trying to figure out how much went to this transaction fee and that one to processing fees and all this kind of stuff, by switching to AUD, we can finally let our fantastic supporters pay in AUD, which means you're not getting stung with the currency conversion and international transaction fees on top of that. So it's actually going to work out um, that you'd be paying, you know, less, not having to have those those fees as well. So um, switching to that is going to make everything certainly really, really streamlined in terms of the Patreon page. Um, and another thing that being in the USD, JB, is that because we were like at the whim of the foreign exchange rates, some weeks, uh, some years, you know, the 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 three dollar tier or five dollar tier would end up being like dollar swings from month to month, depending on what the markets yeah. were doing. So with the AUD, we can set this is the amount and this is what happens every single week. Because um, I know you and Pistol met up with one of the patrons during the week and we're looking at the like the month to month, and it was like wildly different. And I, I just love the P fact that we can just getting... eliminate that. Yeah, people were getting charged 30, 40, 50 percent sometimes on top of what their um, subscription actually entailed. So um, mm. this is going to give you consistent payments. Uh, you're not going to you're not going to be at the mercy of the uh, the AUD, the, the dollar swinging up and down, the USD dollar swinging up and down. 
Um, and, and it rarely works out for the actual patrons themselves. It's, it's never really the opposite where it's like, hey, guys, you got a cheaper month this month. I think that's yeah. maybe happened once in the entire time since we've started. So yeah, um, yeah. It's, good to, it's good to get everything consistent, everything into AED, I think. Good for everyone. I, I, and that's not something that, that extra like when the, the – the USD becomes like a dollar fifty AUD, there or vice versa. It's not something that comes back to us. That's all completely lost um, to yeah. the extra fees and stuff that goes into it because they take a big, a bigger spread. So um, yeah, switching to AUD is something that we're going to be doing on our Patreon page, um, and yeah, that that's going to be a, a great change. Um, but also, you know, our Patreon page has been up for four years now. Every year we're sort of expanding JB. We ran yep. the cup was even bigger and better this year. We got more expansion going on in terms of some of the prizes that you might touch on in just a second and what we want to do in the off season that we can offer you guys. Um, and just costs are getting higher, mate. Like the the I think over the last two years it's somewhere between twenty and twenty five percent. The costs went up in terms of getting our merch um, that we offer to our Patreon yep. uh, people. So. Um, we want to continue to provide the best products available um, and that sadly means maybe making some alterations um, to the tiers prices just to keep up with the increasing costs. So um, Yeah, so uh, um, sorry, just, just if I can intervene for a second there. Yeah. Um, obviously, inflation effect affects us all um, in different ways. Everyone, you, could, you, yeah, you only have to have bought anything over the last few years to understand that inflation has been outrageous. Um, we have, I think, ignored it thus far so in, in our four years. We, yeah, haven't, we, have, we haven't changed in four years. Be- because our inflation to us was more so, you know, this is our time we're putting in rather than anything. It's not really hurting us to to not inflate with the market. Um, mm-hmm. But now with some of the prizes and that, we're running obviously a lot of free competitions as well with the cup and – um, with the last man standing and, and that inflation is, is just stinging it a little bit more. So um, for the yeah. first time ever, it goes without saying, we're just going to raise our prices a little bit. Um, we're going to go through exactly what those price rises are for each tier. Um, yep. And the good news is, I suppose, if there is a silver lining from this, switching from USD to AUD is just going to take a massive, massive punch off of this um, move. You guys aren't going to feel much at all. So we're going to go through exactly what that conversion is going to be. Yeah, that, that allows us to actually not increase it as much as what we probably could have because those additional fees that both the, we're getting charged and our patrons are getting charged sort of evaporate. So yep. um, prices for the community tier are going from $5 currently to $6. Our prize league is going from $10 to $12 and rivalry league is going from $18 to $20. So um, yeah, obviously there is going to be an increase there and that's uh, some people aren't going to be super happy with that but... Um, we're doing the absolute best we can to continue making this product at the exact same standard, if not better, every single year. And that's something I'm I'm really passionate about. And um, yeah, yeah. Do you have any comments on that, JB? Like, how do you feel? Uh, I mean, look, I think the the discussion went back and forth between all three of us. Um, we at first it was how can we get away with just not doing this at all. Um, not because of the awkwardness of having to do it, just because uh, we're, we're more of a community-driven um, business. We're not. We don't feel like we're a business-driven business at times. Um, you guys are, are what's meaningful to us. The people in the Slack, um, the people in the rivalry league, um, those people that we just know the names of and, and we've seen the faces of uh, with meetups and such. So um, that is the thing that we want to maintain. Um, but to be able to do that is is now gotten to a point where this has to be a crucial step. Um, but I would advise anyone currently logging onto Patreon to cancel uh, just to listen to the rest of this podcast. We've done a lot, um, as much as we possibly can to make this worth it. Um, it's not just raising the prices and providing the same product. Um, with us raising the prices, we've um, persevered to do the best we can to also raise the, the – um, what's the word I'm looking for? The The quality. Quality um, content, the content. Uh, so yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be better in the long run. Um, trust us. So we're gonna get into that in a bit. Um, if you're, is that all you had on this one, Chizo? Yeah, move on? absolutely. Let's uh, let's go through some of the uh, changes that are we having to tears. So the rest of what we have to say here is very positive. So I'm, I hope you survive through that first little little speed bump there. The band aid's um, been ripped off. It has been ripped off. Um, you can tell that we're not extremely comfortable with, with with raising the prices. We just want our patrons to to sort of be comfortable and happy. So, 
Um, if anyone has a real concern or issue, please just message us and I'm, I'm sure something can be spoken about, worked out and discussed. So we're always happy to jump into those conversations. Um, so I'm going to jump into the next thing. It is the Prize League update. Um, now, the Prize League in the past um, statistically has been a, a division that essentially – the rivalry league members who get access to both of the tiers below them um, have inhabited and essentially beyond that, uh, not a lot of people have been interested to to sort of dive in there um, above what we offer on the bottom tier, the base tier, which is probably our best value tier. Um, that's going to change this year. So what we've done is we've identified that the prizes that we've been giving out from year one um, were exactly what we could give out in year one, um, probably the same for year two. Um, but now it's getting to a point where we can actually up this and and still keep up with with what we want to do elsewhere in the business. So um, the prize league tier is going to go from one monthly mug winner to three, which will be the top three scorers for the month in the tier. Um, you have to have joined at the beginning of that month. So you have to have participated in all f- four weeks of the prize league that, that month. Um there is going to be a prize distributed steal, um, which is a randomly generated prize to any participant in the actual league. There's also going to be a new prize um, to be decided, I think, at this point, but something along the lines of a, a lanyard or or some knick-knack that we have um, laying around for the with the Dr. Supercoach merch um, that will be distributed to the, a percentage to be decided, which will be towards the bottom of the ladder just to keep those – Lads interested and ladettes interested uh, later on in the season if you're struggling a little bit. Um, just a little incentive for you guys to be in there. Um, also, the winner of the entire prize league. We've never had a prize league winner prize, which um, is a little bit baffling, but I think the justification was always there until it wasn't, uh, which is this year. So the person who finishes on top for the entire season is going to get I think the most exciting prize that we've ever given out, which is going to be a picture with JB. That I mean, (laughs) we we could also arrange that as well. Um, (laughs) Depends where you live, I guess. I'm not getting one with you, Tristan, that you're a bit far away. I'd love to go to New York, actually. No, I'll get one with you, Tristan. No, he's in Philly. Um, No, essentially, we're going to – yeah, well, he can travel to New York. They're like next-door neighbors. Um, (laughs) I want to go to New York. I don't want to go to Philly. Philly's Philly's smelly. Um, Anyway, we're going to have a bobblehead customized um, of ourselves, all three of us, so Pistol, Chizo, and myself, will be shipped out for the winner of the prize league. That's going to be, I think, our most expensive prize we've delivered to date. Um, it's definitely going to be the, the most enjoyable one I want a set for myself, but uh, I'm not <laughs> greedy. But um, essentially, it's it's super exciting that we have something, a massive fish to offer um, prize league participants, something to join the league without just being in the rivalry league. Um, so hopefully we can we can make that a little bit more exciting for everyone this year. Yeah, I, I, I'm just kind of blown away about the the idea when you came up with that. You were just like, I think it came to you in a dream and you were just like, one o'clock in the morning, what if we did bobbleheads? What if we did bobbleheads? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, look, honestly, I you think about it. We have uh, – if you're in our Slack, you know. It's a kind of if you know, you know. Um, but also listeners of our podcast for years know that we have a lot of like knacks. For example, Sean Higgins was my prior knack. Butters is becoming my new one. Um, Chizo has red sunnies. That is his um, his calling. Um, Pistol, a little bit robotic. We, we could really um, – we could really – Let's just make him the guy from Futurama. What's about- his name? Yeah, Bender. Uh, we could genuinely yeah, Bender. Know, like that. That is the aim. They're gonna they're gonna reflect our personalities, our little um, inside jokes. You're gonna see that all in the bobbleheads. It's not just gonna be a boring old you know picture of me with my hat on because I've got a receding hairline. Um, it's, it's gonna have everything um, that that you guys have sort of known about us for years gone. Um, it's gonna be a very exciting prize. So I'm excited to get that out. Um, the next update, Chizo. If you don't mind, do you, are we ready to swing on? Yeah, no, keep going, keep going. You're on a roll. Absolutely. So we're going to also update our rivalry league. Um, so this is going to have a little bit, um, a little bit of changes this year. We're going to try to make it a little bit more exciting. Um, I think the rivalry league is a, a ridiculous success. We've always had a sold out rivalry league, which is great. We're very thankful for our fans for that. Um, what we're going to be doing this year is adding an additional league into rivalry league now 
I stress that this was something that n- I don't think any of us, Chizo, really put thought into post-season this year. Um, we thought the exclusivity as it was um, was precious, um, but having read the feedback in the Excel spreadsheet we sent out to everyone, having spoken to a few rival league members personally, um, I believe this is something that will improve the league um, based on what a lot of people sort of said back to us. So 15 new members will be able to join. Um, that'll clear out our waiting list, so no one's stuck on a waiting list now. Um, and essentially, it's going to be – I don't want to commit to anything long-term, um, but if it's not one of the – if not the last expansion, I'll, I'll be a little bit surprised. We're still very, very um, – cautious of over expanding in that right for league the exclusivity is super important to us um we love that everyone knows each other's names everyone uh, sort of can message each other dm each other even uh, and know each other on a personal basis and um that it's that exclusivity that we want to maintain i think adding an additional five people per team still maintains that um but any more and we start reaching into um uh, you know shark infested waters if so to speak so at this stage, I think this expansion is, is going to be very good for the league, um, but we don't plan on doing this yearly um, and maybe not by yearly or, or so on and so forth. Um, so, Chiso, are you excited for a few more few more teammates? I'm massively excited. I think it's also important to mention that um, the size that it currently is is probably – there's only ever a few spots that turn up you know what I mean? From year to year, there might be two or three spots that are actually become available, and so that that yeah. waiting list never gets cleared out. Like, yeah, uh, we do absolutely, absolutely no advertisement for like future positions in rivalry league, and we we have people out of the blue just saying, "Can I be on a, a like wait?" We started making a wait list just because people asked to be be on one that didn't exist. Um, yeah, because you know, like, so um, giving them more of a chance to get in and having a better turnover rate is something that I think will play hand in hand um, so that it, in the future it also gives people a lot more access to to get in there as well. So um, I, I'm really, really excited about it and I'm excited about the more changes in terms of how the game is going to be played, JB. Mm, so there are more changes in regards to that. So for starters, um, this has been one long requested. I'll, I'll shout out Wushka who's been asking me this for years. Um, we're definitely going to mix up the teams this year. So it won't be Raven facing Raven again for the fifth year straight. Um, Raven is going to be spread into the other teams. Phoenix is spread into the other teams and Seagull is spread into the other teams with the new guys all mixed in between. You'll be playing up against new people this year. So it's not going to be the same old people, the same old rivalries. Oh man, I'm sick of trash talking DVDA. I want to trash talk a new guy. Um, that is going to happen this year. So we're very excited that we're going to be mixing it up. Um, I think that's a very, very heavily popular um, yes. response from the public to, to sort of do that. Um, so that's going to be exciting for those who are currently in there. Um, you're going to come up against new people. Also, we're going to revamp the draft just a little bit. So um, the draft is a bit linear at the moment um, with its thoughts. What's well, a snake? It's obviously aligned. No, as in, <laughs> this, this, <laughs> he, yeah, okay, it's a snake draft, um, and, I'm, and there's a snake on this podcast with me, actually, now that we're talking about them. Um, oh. it, it's, so essentially, what we want to do is we want to just think outside the box a little bit, make the draft a little bit more fun, um, incorporating stuff, and these are purely examples because the brainstorming is still ongoing with this, um, but the ability to steal someone's pick, to potentially block someone's pick, uh, to whip out a Uno reverse card live on on stream and, and sort of just do do some what madness with that. Um, the potential of father son selections like uh, Butler and Chizo. Um, there's, there's a lot of <laughs> wait. Potential. Who's who? <laughs> you can decide that. I think Butler's the son. Um, there's a lot of potential with the draft, uh, and we plan on mixing it up this year. So it's just a little bit more. Uh, I just want to say interesting, um, and maybe yeah. that sort of. And the rivalry is supposed to be a competitive draft, but maybe that adds a little bit more um, fun and games to the actual uh, system. So I think that'll be really interesting, Cheese. I'm excited for that. Yeah, man. It's going to be – it's actually going to be awesome. I think that's – Like the, the ability to to throw out an Uno reverse card when you try and steal <laughs> one of my boys. Um, although there, there might be uh, – we introduced live trading last year. 
I wonder if there, there's going to be an extra layer where the third person, uh, the third coach not part of the trade throws in his Uno River. You can't, you can't trade pick one. Uh, it doesn't work like that, I'm, JB. I'm excited to see what Tactics Pistol comes up with because we know he takes it very seriously. Um, you and I, I think we'll just keep doing our thing and, uh, and having fun with it. But Pistol, he's a very serious character. It's probably why he wins it most years. Um, that is... That is, for me, the Rivalry League update done. Mm-hmm. Um, super exciting stuff happening there. So um, very keen to to get into that, which is all – the season's coming up, you know. It's all coming up soon. I'm more excited for the next announcement, Jesus. So this is the big one. If, if you guys are following and you're not Patreons and you're wondering if you should still listen to this podcast, you should. Um, the Absolutely. next minimum two – the next three announcements are, are all for you guys. So go for it, Jesus. <laughs> so the next thing that we uh, want to announce is that we're finally dropping merch over at drsupercoach.com.au, spelling out Dr. D-O-C-T-O-R, uh, drsupercoach.com.au. Um, you'll see that the page is currently uh, behind a coming soon um, password, but in the uh, the coming weeks we're going to be um, – through throughout the next year, JB, we're going to be doing some drops as the year goes on, some uh, – um, some branded super coach content, some, um, you know, I don't want to give too much away. I actually don't want to give no. too much away. There's, there's going to be some things that have our logo and our name on it. There's going to be some things in the works that might not. That will be uh, rather interesting, um, JB. We've got a lot happening behind it. Uh, we've also decided that active patrons, um, so if you're already a patron uh, uh, of ours, you'll be getting a discount code for uh being an amazing supporter already so if you do want to go over and head up, check out the merch store you'll be uh, getting something a, a bonus in terms of that um but yeah we just we don't really want to rush this and that's probably why we haven't opened one previously or, or moved forward with this to to make it more um easy to get your hands on it rather than just being for rivalry league patrons at all jb but um yeah, it's it's all about getting the best product possible and and the best thing that we can put out for people that want to support us as well, uh, which is huge for me. But I'm I'm having had a look at some of the samples. I'm really really excited of what we've got coming forward. Extremely excited. Um, it also opens up the opportunity to, as you've already mentioned, um, do some prizes to get some discounts out to people. Um, I think we've discussed uh, the rivalry league people getting some form of you know discount prize or something like that at some point in the season, which is super exciting as well. I want to stress as well uh, that this has been something heavily requested by mostly our patrons, a little bit out in the community as well, um, <laughs> and mostly by you, of, and a lot by me. Don't don't get me wrong, <laughs> um, which has really motivated us to get into it. Um, I do want to stress as well that uh, the merchandise on in the actual store. Uh, is exclusive to the store um, as the Rivalry League merchandise is exclusive to the Rivalry League. So um, we're not going to be mixing and matching there and, and just sort of ruining the appeal of the Rivalry League by just sending all their merch into the store. It's going to be all different. Um, so we'll, we'll know who the pay-to-win people are and, and who the uh, the play-to-win people are. So that's a bit exciting as well, um, keeping that stuff exclusive. But um, I know you don't want to release much, Cheezer. I know you want to keep a lot under wraps, but I just want to say... A lot of puns are said on this podcast, and if any of those ended up on a uh, a bit of clothing, I think I'd be a customer. Look, if you've been listening to us for a while, you'd be pretty cognizant of the types of things that we might come up with. <laughs> mm, cognizant, indeed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that. Will, I, I have nothing else to add for the merch store, uh, but that's <laughs> extremely exciting, man. Uh, that. If if people have ideas, if people want to see anything on there, um, at, we're at no point locked into doing exactly what we're doing uh, or what we've got mm. planned already. So please let us know if you want something to to find its way on there. I know, um, shout out to Gory has been asking me to to get some sort of footy shorts or footy singlet into the into the merch. Uh, I I think it's a bit too exclusive to exactly what he would want. But um, if this <laughs> is something that people want, there's only one way of us knowing and that's by you guys um, shouting out to us. Reaching so, out. Exactly. Yeah, in, in whatever way you can, um, hit us up. My DMs are open in Twitter. So um, if you have any ideas or if you've got something in mind that suits you, um, definitely hit me up. Another change that we've got coming in 2023, JB, is something that we found 
increasingly more and more difficult as the years have gone on. I think when was the first year we did this? 2016? Like it's been or maybe even before that. Like it's been mm. six or seven years now. And the introduction of Wednesday and Thursday games has completely ruined our secondary podcast. That you know, there, there was a time we did two a week, JB, when when things yep. were consistent and we had teams drop. Like I, I remember right back in the start, we'd have Skype ready to go, and then as soon as the teams refreshed on the on the screen, we'd hit record basically, and and, yep, and go from there. <laughs> we would mispronounce all the names. You, you re- yeah, that's right. Um, Christian Salim still sticks in my mind. Um, okay, okay. t-shirt good. idea. Um, and uh, all right. yeah, so what we're planning on doing moving forward to try and be more flexible, more fluid with the the teams, we're going to start really committing to doing these live streams to give live advice, um, Q and A's through the chat as soon as teams become available. Um, and just before lockout, uh, where we can actually engage with the community and and give you some much more accurate information. The the one thing that I, I probably disliked in terms of 2022 was the majority of our um, advice that went out that that got to most people listening was usually on a on a Monday night, JB. And yep. so much happens between Monday and Thursday or Friday that the advice can become obsolete. And so I think it's extremely important to be able to be flexible with the situation and say, this person's out, let's go live, let's chat to people that want to post questions in, 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 in the comments and stuff of like that. We can say, hey, this is now my updated opinion and my updated thoughts based on what's just happened. Um, and particularly around, you know, buy rounds and, and those partial lockouts of like a Wednesday, Thursday games, I think that's going to be super, super important. And it yeah, may not huge. even be related to one a week. You know, we got one game Thursday, one game Friday, one game um, uh, you know, we can jump on multiple times, like when things are updated during the week. And, and I just, I'm really, really excited to actually be able to fully commit to that this year, having not previously really had the time to put into that. Yeah, um, live stream Thursdays. Well, I think they're going to be dubbed. Um, so that that's yeah, huge for us. We need something more catchy. I think. No, no, that that one sticks. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, I think it's important to say. I think every single Thursday where there's not a game on, uh, there will be a live stream. We're still not going to podcast on those Thursdays. Um, mm. The Thursdays where there is a game on, uh, we can't guarantee a live stream. Uh, I think it's um, in our best interest to, to try for most most weeks, but um, that's something that will obviously be rolling uh, as the season goes on. But best believe you'll be hearing about it all over our socials when we go live. And um, if you jump in, Obviously, it's all going to be about being responsible to the chat, um, answering questions, going through our own teams live on the podcast, our own trades. Um, so how many times last year did I say something on the Monday and then so much changed before the actual lockout, my trades changed and people got annoyed because, hey, JB, you said this, you committed to this on the Monday, these were your trades, I've, I've gone in with you and now you've pivoted and your trades worked out better. Um, and it's just yep. because there's so much going on during the week and, and we can't help it and we can't keep every single person that listens or that consumes us via Slack updated on our movements. Um, but this is a much better way of giving you guys that information right before the first bounce. Um, and, and it's just, I think it's super exciting. And geez, I, I need to ask, what if I miss the live stream? What, what if I want to well, watch it on a Friday? Look, if you do miss the live stream, you probably think there's no chance to to catch it. You're going to be wrong, and that's because we're hoping to integrate those live streams into uh, a more of a presence on our YouTube channel. So um, what we've probably noticed over the last probably three to four years is that um, the clear change is that people want to see visual content from us, and we get that a lot, and it's taken a long time for us to sort of, you know, I'm often told I've got the... uh, the face for radio, JB, and I have to agree. Yeah, sorry about uh, that. And so coming out, coming out from the shadow. I mean, there's a reason I wear the wear the sunnies. But coming <laughs> out from the shadows and being comfortable doing that kind of stuff um, moving forward, I think is going to be really, really exciting and really enjoyable. And taking, get moving ourselves outside of our comfort zone as well, because the pressure is now on on yourself to be live and have uh, your research up to date and be ready to rock and roll. Um, I think we're at a point where we can we can do that quite comfortably and basically yep. just freestyle, um, and yeah, just being able to take that that content and put it on YouTube for those that do want to catch up with that, I think is going to be fantastic. And I'm I've dabbled with it in the past, but it's something that 
I feel more comfortable with now and I think you are as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there, there's a chance that we ap- appear somewhere live at some point in the future um, in, in person. So look, there's a, a lot of stuff that we're considering. There's a lot of stuff that we're open to. Um, we want to move with where our consumers are going. Um, we don't want to just l- have them leave us in the dust per se. We, we if, if anything, want to want to keep wowing them with the new content and, and sort of take them with us on our journey. So um, that's what we're planning on doing. We're not fossils. We're not stuck on on a podcast. Um, we've never done a podcast like this before. Uh, we're, we're ever expanding and trying to improve what we're doing. And I think this is maybe the biggest expansion and improvement we're going to make to the page since we, we started, since we started the podcast, I think. Um, so yeah. it's super exciting. Uh, and I would hazard a guess is to say that the the YouTube won't just be for live streams. Um, I would expect to see a lot more of us um, on the YouTube platform, but it's extremely important that I stress that the podcasts are in no way stopping, slowing down, the podcast is still our number one priority, but I expect that we will we'll find ourselves more so on the other networks as well as what we're doing mm. with the podcast, which is is just super exciting. Yeah, uh, you've got one more big change to mention, JB. That's um, probably going to surprise a few people. Yeah, this might be a biggie due to the uh, consistency that we've sort of prided ourselves on over the years. Um, but the the live scores. On our Facebook page, uh, which is only going to affect a minute amount of people listening right now, um, we tend to post quarter by quarter live scores, just a little screenshot. Um, I think it's just, how do I put this into the, the best words? It's definitely becoming more difficult to capture what the community want with the live scores. So this year was an absolute nightmare. Um, they would do scaling 10, 15 minutes after the game. They would scale a quarter five minutes after the quarter is finished and the next quarter is just starting, bam, scaling. Um, but our, our goal is to get that information to you guys quicker than that. So you guys miss a lot of that extra stuff happening behind the scenes with the Herald Sun. Um, and we're not really posting as much of an accurate picture as what we were when we started what we were even up to last year so um, things are changing in the super coach landscape scores are being totaled differently um, there's just a lot happening at all times and i think this exact facet of what we provide um, is just becoming a little bit outdated um, if you don't already know of the several um, websites that offer second by second live scores rather than quarter by quarter um, I'm happy to, to shout them out on the on the socials or something if, if anyone's willing to ask. Um, but essentially, there are so many other ways to consume what we offer um, in a quicker basis that I, I think it's becoming um, – it's getting to a point where it's a little bit null and void um, and would rather focus it's on now. other exciting things. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. and I, it's obsolete. I, I, it absolutely – has been something that we have enjoyed for a long period of time, but the amount of effort that goes into it and the amount of people that you know have to be around, and then the scaling comes into it. It's for the for the few people that do use it. The, there's going to be some fantastic like second by second updates that are going to f- fill that space completely. Um, and it's sad to see it go, but it's we just got to stay with the times. Yeah, so it's important. I've got a few more comments on this. So it's important to note that um, there have been hundreds of admins in my time, um, hundreds of people who have contributed on the page. I myself used to post three, four, even five games a week of live scores just to sort of keep it ticking because the community and and you guys who comment on our Facebook know who you are. Uh, You guys are relentless when we're late or if we miss a quarter or, or anything along those lines. Um, a few people are definitely harder on us than the others, but that's fine. We, we hold ourselves to a very professional standard on there. Um, I just want to take the time to thank every um, admin that is currently contributing, every admin that has contributed. It's such a um, – it's a volunteer – it's volunteer work. Um, these guys aren't, aren't coming in and getting paid six figures a year. Um, they're coming in and doing this out of their own spare time because they love the community, they love the game. Um, that Those people deserve – every bit of commendation uh, and we couldn't be more appreciative of, of those who have offered their time. And that that obviously, um, and in some cases, especially includes past admins who have just given so much to the page as well. 
um, which I appreciate. Just I can't even put into words. But um, it's also important to note we're still going to be posting news. Um, your your laid out your um, your player news. This guy's got an injury. This guy's on a hamstring. Um, this rookie's up for selection this week. Those those bits of information will still be posted on the page. We still plan on keeping super coaches up to date. Um, we're also going to be running back the community team again this year. So um, getting everyone involved with the community team is super important as well. Um, so we're going to be filling the the space that the live schools leave. Um, with a lot more posting, hopefully a lot more relevant posting. Um, and you guys aren't going to have to scroll through six games of, of live scores to see, oh, hey, my player's actually missing this week. So um, it's, yeah, it's super important. We're refining what we're doing on the Supercoach on, on the Facebook page. Um, and I think for the better, I think we're making a big improvement in, in making it um, far more consumable for our our followers so that's just i don't know it almost comes with heavy heart and it's it's been a part of our page and our brand for such a long time yeah and and obviously that's that's where it all started so um it's amazing what has happened in the last six seven eight years to to get to the point that we're at so uh, i'm extremely thankful for every single person that's contributed to to help with the journey of uh, of getting us to where we are right now and yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the future. There's some really, really exciting things. I, I genuinely can't wait to, to get underway, particularly uh, in 2023. Well, that essentially does us um, a couple more things. Doctor's Daily Dose will obviously be returning next year via our Patreon. Um, the Rivalry League podcast will be returning next year. I know a lot of people asked about that in the, the feedback form. Um, we're glad that was such a success as well. Um that that essentially covers those and besides that um with these additional changes we we hope to just receive a lot of feedback on this podcast we hope that people enjoy the changes that we've made but um we don't need people to just come and affirm our opinions and, and think otherwise we want you guys to be honest we we just we don't know if what we're doing is correct until you guys tell us that what we're doing is correct so um just just anything any bit of feedback you guys can give is so much appreciated um, we've shown before that we're willing to move with, with what you guys are thinking as well so um, enough feedback of one type and you'll see changes so um, besides that Chizo, how exciting um, there's so much so much coming from, from this season uh, and it's November as, as of this recording so um, I can't wait, I'm super excited so thanks everyone for listening uh, we'll catch you guys very soon when the game launches, there will obviously be a few podcasts out immediately um, we have watched and assessed the draft and the trade period. There will be a podcast probably as soon as the game does release with all that information in there, um, as well as our initial reactions. So super excited to chat to you guys soon and catch you guys then. Bye.